Do you have a kid who's around 10 years old and you want to introduce them to the glory of JRPGs that aren't Pokemon? Well, Destiny Connect may be the perfect game for you and your kid. I'm Jordan from Switchwatch and we're taking a look at NAS America's latest JRPG, Destiny Connect TikTok Travelers. Before we get into it, just a heads up, if this review is bringing you to the channel for the first time, we are gunning for 50,000 subscribers and so, once we do reach that number, we will be giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite along with a copy of Zelda Link's Awakening to one of you. So make sure you subscribe to be in with the chance of winning. Plus, you get all our awesome content too. The story for Destiny Connect is a story that's been told a hundred times before. It's a time traveling adventure where you and your friends drop into the past in order to save the future. In movies, books and video games this is nothing new, but before you switch off Destiny Connect is still nicely done. What makes it done so well here is with its sweetly charm and told with a younger audience in mind. It's like a kids TV show or something Disney or DreamWorks could easily have come up with themselves. You are Sherry, an energetic adventurous girl in the town of Clockney. On the stroke of the millennium, everyone in the town freezes in time. Only a few people are still able to move around and Sherry, her friend Pegrio, plus a giant robot buddy called Isaac end up traveling back in time in order to fix just what happened. It has all the tropes of time travel, bumping into your family when they were young, the grandfather paradox and so on and despite the simpler nature to it, I quite liked it. It's very clear from the off that Destiny Connect is aimed at a younger audience, not only from the story or from the visual style, but the fact that there's a tutorial to tell you how to move, how to walk around, how to adjust the camera and literally everything in the game. The very basic things that every gamer knows already, it tells you how to do literally everything. Now I'm not being snobbish and this is not a complaint, there's almost certainly room for an entry level RPG for children. So just a heads up, this is aimed at a slightly younger audience or those less experienced with games or perhaps the genre. In that regard, systems rarely get adventurous, it's very by the books for the most part, more of a classical style JRPG. Battles are turn based where you face off against some awesome looking mechanical monsters, some robots inspired by everyday machinery like toasters, TVs, blenders and the like will face off in simple RPG action. Your three characters in your battle party have a standard attack plus some upgradable and unlockable special attacks or abilities. These are linked to energy points which flow up and down in the battles. That's about as complicated as it gets aside from Isaac, the robot dude who has the special ability to switch functions. He can transform himself into various job types which offer different kinds of abilities. You can have like a fireman or a cowboy or a samurai and it's fun to change mid battle and you do have some tactical things that you can use to your advantage. You know, each of them offer different things. Outside of battles, it's fairly basic too. You can use gears to improve Isaac, add a couple of mods to your weapons, this may be the part where kids find it a little bit confusing but compared to other JRPG systems it's really quite simple and I enjoyed that aspect. Other simple modern RPGs like uh, I Am Setsuna for example were similar but kind of became stale and boring after a while but Destiny Connect didn't. It still had its charm, the battle animations were nice and lively, also succinct too. You attack really fast, animations are super quick and that meant battles were never a slog and they were over in a few seconds. One of the things that I'm pretty sure plenty of you will be happy to hear is that there are no random battles. You have enemies big and small roaming around dungeon like places and the town that will commence a battle if you touch them as has become the norm these days. If they see you they will charge at you, if they touch your back then you're likely to be put on the back foot with an early enemy attack while vice versa if you touch them on the back. It's pretty bare but it's also charming and plods along at a nice pace. There are no side quests here which is very rare for a JRPG, it's basically just following the story going from location to location, battling enemies and moving the story along with some nice charming character. The only semblance of other things to do is to collect blue drops that are very well hidden in the environment and you can exchange these for different outfits for Sherry. I'm sure that this is something younger girls may enjoy, although I struggle to be too enthusiastic about it. 
And I just want to say that even though it is for a younger audience, it's not as much as a pushover as you'd expect. It's not a difficult game or anything, but it will give you a sense of a challenge with a few tough large enemies and bosses which need you to make use of your skills, especially the debuffing of their stats. I think some parents may need to help their kids understand this aspect. Before we go into other aspects of the review, let's just have another quick break. The audio here is something quite special, well, at least musically. The soundtrack to Destiny Connect is something that I instantly fell in love with. There's lots of sweet piano melodies that really grabbed me, but it, not only that, but I loved the variety too. There's some funkiness in here, some pop rock when exploring the town. It has both a classical fairy tale feeling mixed in with some modern beats too sometimes even in the same music track, and I really like it and I want to get my hands on the soundtrack to listen to. Sadly, there is no voice acting at all, which I'm not normally one to get down on, but there are a few factors that make me feel it's quite a big disappointment. For a start, it's not a cheap RPG. I'll talk about value later, but for the price you need to pay, some voice work should have been implemented with such a heavy focus on story. Also, as mentioned a few times, it's a game that's aimed at children. As much as adults can enjoy this, I'm sure when they were making it, they wanted to open the imaginations of 10 year olds for this time traveling adventure. But I think due to so much talking, kids are going to zone out quickly. I mean, 20 years ago, fine. But now with so many things to try and grab kids' short attention spans, I think that they needed some cute and professional voice acting here to carry people through the game. I know Nippon Ichi Software are going through some rough times financially, but it's a big loss in my opinion. Visually, the game is very unique, especially for a Japanese RPG. Rather than going for the anime tropes that you often see, this is just straight up Disney or DreamWorks in terms of visual style. Uh, you know, big forehead, no chin, pointy curved up nose. Uh, it's certainly appealing to children, and I've stated a few times that it's really what they were going for. I think the character models look nice, the enemies especially look great. Sherry and her friends have great animations, even if they are limited in variety. Where it does fall down is in the environments, when outside in the woods that stuff's fine, but inside the town and inside buildings everything is very very basic, models are flat and flimsy looking, it's also a bit sparse which gives it a lifelessness about it in certain areas. It's overall a little fuzzy too, it kind of looks like it was made for stronger hardware and then paired back for the Switch, so you do get some weird artifacts popping up here and there. Although this didn't particularly bother me, it was the flimsy cheap environments that bothered me the most. It does look better in handheld mode too, playing on a big TV when everything is stretched out probably does this game less justice than needed, so I think Switch Lite owners may not even realise what I'm moaning about. In terms of value, Destiny Connect is digitally priced at £35.99 in the UK, $39.99 in the US, and also the same in Euros. That's the prices on the eShop, obviously. Now, I have been harsh on NIS America in the past for their pricing of the releases, but it does seem that they are starting to back down a little bit to be something a bit more reasonable. I mean, in the UK, Penny Punching Princess was like £5 more expensive than this, so they are being more reasonable. Still, I would have been far more comfortable if Destiny Connect was around £5 or dollars cheaper still. If it was £30 for a new franchise, new RPG, something a bit different, 20 hours long, yeah, I'd give it a thumbs up on value. Still, despite it being fully 3D with some obvious production gone into it, it still lacks that extra bit of polish that would elevate it to being worthy of the asking price. Voice acting for me is what irks me somewhat. I, I really feel games asking for this much money should probably have some voice acting, especially with a focus on story. Even if it's just Japanese or only for important cutscenes. You know, show me where the money is gone. This is available physically, however, and you can pick it up with your hands. Uh, there's just something about JRPGs where they're kind of better physically. Is that just me? Uh, if you want to order this, and by the way, be awesome about it and support the Switch Watch team, I'll pop a couple of links below. One link for our friends over in America, and one for our fellow Brits as to where you can order it. Amazon link, so really convenient for most of you. There's also a collector's edition that I think is only available on NIS America's store, which includes some nice extra stuff, including a soundtrack, which I'm not gonna lie, I want. I just can't afford to buy the collector's edition just for that. So I'm a sad Jordan. Before we get into my final thoughts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. And of course, to our viewers, continue to show your recent awesome interactions. Comments mean the world to us. Tell us what you think of Destiny Connect. Is this something you're going to pick up or not? Let us know. 
Overall, Destiny Connect's TikTok Travelers has its fair share of issues, but honestly, I had a lovely time with it. Its mid-tier budget has equal amounts of charm as it does misgivings. The family-friendly nature to it, with its Pixar-like art style, may be a little too sickly sweet for some, and as an almost gateway entry to the genre for kids, uh, will probably make people stick their noses up. Kind of how the characters look here. But it quickly won me over, and despite those issues, its charisma, its bravery to go against what's cool, plus some likeable characters and a nice story, meant I came out having a good time with it. It's not great, and could have been polished up a bit more, but I think it's a quaint little game that deserves to be given a chance. Play all the edgy anime RPGs you want, but you know, this might be a nice little one to settle down to next to the fireside on a cozy Christmas evening with the kids. A 7 out of 10. Now be sure to check out some of our other content. I do a weekly physical releases video, James does a weekly bargains video, plus we've got lots of reviews, so here's one of those from Juan. I'll see you guys over there, take care.